the technology industry is becoming the place where wealth gets originated and then it can get spread out. But increasingly, the Wall Street financiers are coming to Silicon Valley to invest in companies before they get to Wall Street. By the time a company goes public, you can pretty much bet that anybody who had any connections, who had any appetite, who had any capability, got a bite at it. So if you're buying a tech company when it goes public, you are literally last in line. It's not to say you can't make money, but the odds are way down because this fruit has been picked over many, many, many times. The last bunch of financiers who were sitting in the right place at the right time, we call them Wall Street. These were the people where you used to get capital for your startup. There was no other market for fundraising until you had the metrics to go public. Now, Silicon Valley is turning into the new Wall Street, except it's not as formalized and organized and segmented as the traditional Wall Street. The JP Morgans haven't popped up and the Nasdaqs haven't popped up yet. This is going to fly in the face of conventional wisdom. For the average person, you should be saving for your retirement. But I never set out to save anything. I reinvested everything. In economics, there's the identity S equals I, savings equals investment. So even if you save into your 401k, it's actually just getting reinvested, but it's getting reinvested into some very quote unquote safe, but very unproductive parts of society, such as the government. You're investing in the DMV and the defense department and their returns to date have not been spectacular. It's essentially just whatever money they can take at gunpoint from both taxpayers and foreigners. Generally, it's probably a better bet if you're in the tech industry to invest back in the tech industry, especially if you're young and especially if you can get diversified. Invest in the smartest and best and brightest people that you know around you, as opposed to faraway people in faraway lands with faraway motives, who are frankly just not as motivated and have trillions of dollars of capital flowing into them. $50,000 in your IRA isn't going to make much of a difference to the US government when it gets put into a T-bill, but 50 grand invested into an entrepreneur down the street is going to make a huge difference to their lives. And if you can find 10, 20, 30, 50 investments like that, at least one or two of them will pay off, assuming that you listen to us and build up some skills along the way. Most of my net worth is illiquid and lying in startup companies. But I sleep well at night knowing that I literally have hundreds of teams of brilliant entrepreneurs who instead at the top schools and are leveraged through code because they have engineering degrees, great designers. They're leveraged through capital because they've raised venture money after I invested. They're leveraged through products that they're building that have no marginal cost of reproduction and using the most modern methods of distribution. All of them are working very hard to build things that could be massive and change the world. And it's just going to take a few of them work out for the entire portfolio to balance out. If you have a 1,000x return in your portfolio somewhere, which is not that unheard of in angel investing, you could have made 100 investments to get there and your overall portfolio will still be a 10x even if the other 99 go to zero.